In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. Good morning, and welcome to St Cynog's Church here in Stragunlais, in the ministry area of Tawe Icha. Uh, today we are invited to reflect on the mystery of God in, on this Trinity Sunday, as we gather to worship the one who creates, redeems and sanctifies three persons, one God, without end. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us examine our consciences and prepare to confess our sins before God. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us and set us free from sin. Strengthen us in goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect and the readings for today, Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of the true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counsellor has instructed him? Whom did he consult with his enlighten for his enlightenment and who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are counted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, 
and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They say that Leonardo da Vinci's last words before he died were, I have offended God and mankind because my work not reached the quality it should have. This came from the man who created the Mona Lisa, one of the greatest paintings in the world. For Da Vinci, even his gifts and talents weren't good enough compared with the creation skills of God. He was probably a perfectionist who was and who could never be satisfied with what he crafted. In the Gospel for today, we hear Jesus' last words to his disciples on earth before he ascended to heaven. Everything Jesus had said to his disciples were of great importance. But I'm certain his final words before leaving them would have been very special indeed. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, he said. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Leonardo da Vinci may well have been comparing himself to God, and he may well have realized that even his own impressive skills fell far short of what God could do. His last words may well be words of faith as he contemplated with great awe the ability of God to create out of nothing. And I would like to think that at his death, Da Vinci had a sense of wonder at what God could do. And from that sense of wonder and awe, he probably discovered that he could trust in God during his last moments here on earth. In the first reading today, 
Isaiah attempts to reassure his people because they were afraid and were beginning to have doubts about God's ability to help them. These people were in exile in Babylon, living as slaves to a nation which had taken over Israel. A nation which worshipped pagan gods seemed to be stronger than them who worshipped the one true God. And so Isaiah tells them that God is all-powerful. He is someone they can trust in in their time of fear and distress. He tells them uh, uh, that nobody has taught God anything. Who has directed the Spirit of God, he asks them. We should be in awe of him because he is majestic. So God is majestic, powerful and caring. He pays infinite attention to detail when he cares for us. He loves us perfectly. Isaiah's people felt helpless in their ex exhaustion, and yet God is inexhaustible. Paul's people in Corinth were in a bit of a crisis too. They were a divided and a bickering lot with many complaints. Although they weren't slaves as Isaiah's people were, the Corinthians were slaves to their own selfish desires. And Paul's final words to them in his second letter to them are words we know very well. Paul hopes that they would have the grace of God in creating a loving and caring community, like Jesus showed it would be possible, and all bound by the communion of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, according to Paul, St. Paul, the Church is to be one as the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are one, in order to create a caring, loving, supportive community, giving encouragement, joy and hope to others. It is in that type of Church we discover the true God and we discover our true selves. And according to Jesus himself, at the end of today's Gospel, it is the responsibility of every person baptised in the name of the Trinity to create a community of joy, care, hope, encouragement in the Church. Creating a Church community like that can be a struggle because we are all flawed people. We get upset because we may not get what we want. And the Church, we imagine, doesn't reconcile itself with someone else's idea of church. This can exhaust us and cause division. But Isaiah reminds us that God does not faint or grow weary. He continues to care for us, come what may. This is a reminder that it is God's church we are working for, not our own. It reminds us too that God is far greater than us and far more loving and creative than us. All we need to do as baptised people is step into what he has created for us already. That means we need to have a deep relationship with him, a prayer life which deepens our love for him, a prayer life which leads us to have a greater sense of awe and wonder, which opens up our eyes and our hearts to his love and joy and hope. That is what Leonardo da Vinci uh, discovered. A couple of years ago, I read a story about a Roman Catholic priest who visited a very poor area of a city in South America. During his visit, he celebrated mass for the local people in a decrepit building. After the service, a large, frightening looking man came up to him and said, come to my place, I have something to give you. The priest wasn't sure at first, but the other people told him that this man was a good man although he looked frightening. And so the priest went to the man's home. The house was more like a shed on the point of collapsing. The man told the priest to sit on a rickety old chair and from there he could see the sunset. The big frightening man said to the priest, look sir, how beautiful it is. The two of them sat in silence for several minutes until the sun disappeared. The man then said, I don't know how to thank you for all you have done for us. I have nothing to give you, but I thought you would like to see this sunset. You liked it, didn't you? Good evening. And he shook the priest's hand. That was a man who could recognise the majesty of God in the setting sun. 
He was sharing the greatest thing he could think with someone he appreciated. He was no Leonardo da Vinci and probably had lived a tough life, but nonetheless, his prayer life had led him to discover God's majesty in the created world. And through that prayer, he was able to welcome and share something from his poor home. That gift of welcome created a community. God calls all of us to create a community in that way, a community in which we can show and share the magnificence of God and rejoice in it. As the psalmist says, when I look at your heavens and the work of your fingers, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? It is when we feel helpless and hopeless, like the people of Isaiah, like Leonardo, and like the man in the shanty town somewhere in South America, that we can discover the greatness, the majesty of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May we all find time to sit still and contemplate on the greatness and majesty of God this week. We now affirm our faith with Christians throughout the world in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Today we proclaim our faith in the mystery of the Holy Trinity, three persons in one God, all equal in majesty and splendour, as we pray for all our needs. For John, our Archbishop, and for bishops, priests, and deacons everywhere, may they work tirelessly to foster within the hearts of, the, of God's people a strong love of the faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all Christian people, may we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ through our lives giving glory to God and witness to one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those in positions of authority and influence, may they use their positions not for selfish ends, but for the good of all people, especially the most needy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick and those who care for them, may they know the healing power and the eternal love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died, remembering especially members of our own families, 
and those who are known to us. May they enter into the everlasting peace of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty Father, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we make these prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be united, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, and through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of earth. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks, Holy Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendour, one Lord, one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. And so, with the hosts of angels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim the glory of your name and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. All praise and thanks to you, true and living God, creator of all things, giver of life. You formed us in your own image, but we have marred that image and fall short of your glory. We give you thanks that you sent your Son to share our life. You gave him up to death that the world might be saved, and you raised him from the dead that we might live in him and he in us. Sanctify with your Spirit this bread and wine, your gifts to us, that they may be for us the body 
and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. As he has commanded us, Father, we remember Jesus Christ, your Son, proclaiming his victorious death, rejoicing in his resurrection, and waiting for him to come in glory. We bring to you this bread, this cup. Accept our sacrifice of thanks and praise, Restore and revive your people. Renew us and all for whom we pray with your grace and heavenly blessing. And at the last, receive us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints into that unending joy promised by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, holy and eternal Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.